What's up, my people? This is Showbiz the Adult. All right, man, look. Where are you at? Oh, there you are. Whoops! All right, man, look. <laughs> Let's talk about the magician, Anthony Sims Jr., and what we saw last night against Morgan Fitch. Coffee. I want to say a few things. First, uh, a show business partner of ours by the name of T-Money. Shout out to you. Like a year ago, he, uh, he brought him to my, you know, he made me aware of the magician. I was asleep on him. Also, I want to say this. This is going to be assessment, an assessment on Anthony Sams and what I saw last night. And I know he didn't fight a great fighter. I know he didn't put him out in the first round, but for some reason, I don't think I'm alone in doing this. I'm able to look at someone, look at their skill set, look at what the, their potential and what they possess without them fighting a great fighter. I've done that before. I was able to assess Roy Jones Jr. Back when I was a kid, I knew he was going to be a great fighter. It was easy to tell. Look at what he possessed. I'm able to look at Devin Haney and look at what he possessed. When you fight a great fighter, what is challenged is your will. You know, how do you handle adversity, your courage, your heart? All those things cannot be challenged by fighting the likes of Morgan Fitch. But what you can see, what can be on display is stuff like punching power, accuracy, hand speed, uh, skill set, footwork, uh, all of those things. The ability to adjust a bit. Uh, like I said, uh, footwork and defense. You can look, you can see all those things if you look at a few fights from a fighter to, to grade him, to see his potential. And that's what I'm doing with Anthony, Anthony Sims Jr. All right, man, look. Anthony Sims Jr., when I saw him, the first thing I said to myself was, this is Alan Ghost Dog Green all over again. I'm not sure if you guys remember Alan Green. He, he ended his career 30-something uh, and 6, power in both hands. 33 and 6, something like that, power in both hands. He lost to, to the likes of Andre Ward. I remember him being in the Super Series contest in that tournament with Andre Ward and all those guys. Um, I think Jermaine Taylor was actually in that Super Series, I believe. It was a fantastic one. Alan Green, he had a lot of potential, but uh, he just, just fell short of that potential, but a good fighter. But that's what I thought at first. I said, man, this is Alan Green. He reminds me of Alan Green all over again. Then I saw the way he was throwing his punches, his jab, his power. I said, wait a minute. This is the G-Man, Gerald McCullen. I started looking at his footwork. The way he bounced and stayed on his toes like an Evander Holyfield, uh, Muhammad Ali, uh, uh, you know, those guys, uh, uh, James Quick Tillis. I'm looking at how he's bouncing like he's from the 70s. You know, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard just bouncing. You know, that's a style that you don't see. It looks like the days of old. Then I looked at his guard. It kind of reminded me a bit of Sugar Shane Mosley, the way he held his guard, his feints. And I said, wait a minute, this guy is well schooled. Then I looked at his trunks and it said, crunk. That's when I knew what I was looking at. I'm looking at Hearns. I'm looking at the G-Man, Gerald McCullen. I'm looking at Kermit Centron. I'm looking at people who were blessed by the hands of Emmanuel Stewart, the late Emmanuel Stewie, a pillar in our sport, ripped to him. Come to find out he had his hands on the magician, Anthony Sams Jr. And when I saw him last night, I said, wait a minute, this guy has a great jab. This guy, when I heard him talking to his trainer, he was in the corner saying, yeah, I think I need a jab more. Kind of remind me of Roy Jones Jr. being in this corner when his trainer's talking to him. And he's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, he already knew what he should be doing. When he had Fitch hurt on the ropes after dropping him. 
He said, you know what, I think he's, he got his head back, in, his head intact. We got a few more rounds. Let me not put all my eggs in one basket and, basket and go sw uh, uh, swinging like some amateur. He looked good. And speaking of the amateurs, he lost to Marcus Brown in the Olympic trials. And that wasn't that big of a deal to me because I know a few guys who lost in the Olympic trials. I heard Mike Tyson being one of them. And if my memory doesn't fail me, he did pretty good as a boxer, as a professional. So, I like this Anthony Sims Jr. I think he has a great jab. I think he has power in both hands, crazy power. What is he, 20, 20 and 0, 18 KO, something like that? After his fight, he called out Fielding, and I thought that made sense. I thought it was very uh, uh, smart. It was like a great measuring stick for what he wants to do. He said that Caleb Plant, yeah, you know, that's in his future. But he said that that guy, he's a champion. And let me just, you know, take, take each step, like a stepping stool, to the next fighter, the next fighter. And he called out Fielding. He said, let's go. Smart guy. I think he's going to do some great things in the super middleweight division if he can continue to make weight. I heard he had trouble making this fight and making weight if he stays disciplined. Uh, super middleweight division is very, very stacked. I would like to see him there going up against those boys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll tell you this, I'm very excited about Anthony Sims Jr. And I hope he stays at super middleweight. If not, going up to light heavyweight, that's not that bad either. You got Alexander Vosik. You got Bivol. We saw him last night. Uh, you still got Kovalev. You got some guys there. You got better BF. You got some guys there. So this is a great young talent. I think he's like 24 years old. I think he has a bright future. And I know those who are pugilists, okay, who are very, very into the sport is watching this video right now. So I'm expecting some great comments below. Let me know what you think. Maybe I can learn from you too. Show sure,